the town council's finance and the school board's finance committee meeting. I welcome everyone. Um, finance committees are present along with staff uh, from both departments, uh, the school department um, leaders, as well as the town. So welcome. Um, our goal this evening is to kind of uh, maybe start with uh, um, a review of the objectives and goals and the conversations that occurred at our first meeting um, and then talk about budget targets after that. I, I want to start by apologizing for not being here at the last meeting. Um, it was the state of the budget address at, uh, in Augusta, and so I had to balance where I could be. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't be in both places. Um, so if you think that balancing the budget in Scarborough is difficult, try doing it at the state level. Um, but it's, uh, it's an interesting environment. So I, I do apologize and thank you for, to Peter for you know, pitching in for me and Don as well. So um, with that, um, I wasn't here, so I'm going to turn it over to Sarah and uh, maybe you can then start the conversation for the rest of us on the objectives that were kind of set at the last meeting. Yeah, awesome. So one of the things we agreed on last meeting um, was to have you guys graciously allowed us to crash your <laughs> your finance meeting um, to discuss uh, sort of collaboratively budget goals. Um, and so I think we all separately went away. I know you guys had a meeting um, earlier this week. We mm -hmm. also had a meeting. And so the purpose of this meeting is really just to come to an agreement on what that budget goal is and, and get it documented under our, our joint committee goals. So that's the stated objective. Just want to throw it around the table, see if anything else, anybody has anything else they want to try and accomplish. Sarah, cool. could we maybe clarify how much time we have? So what time is your... Well, our normal meeting was going to start at 6, right? I'm trying to remember. I, I think we have all sorts of time. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely go to 6.30. I, I okay. suspect your constraints are suspect. larger than ours. When's Our next meeting, meeting You have seven. us till 7. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. That's good to know. Is, if you guys have other pressing things on your agenda, <clears throat> oh, that's not that. to get yeah. to that. Yeah. So I think uh, maybe to start, if you guys want to present or talk through where you arrived at, and then sure. go from there, and hopefully we'll just turn into an I'm organic. It, I don't think they... I'm hoping I have enough copies, so I'm going to pass this around. Kind of like everyone's so, uh, you know, thank you to Tom. So the town council's um, um, had a workshop at its last meeting um, to discuss um, parameters, uh, kind of like the baseline of where we would like to see the budget um, in setting a goal. Um, that occurred at the last town council meeting, and before you is um, the stated goal that the council came up with um, in a consensus manner. There was no formal vote, but it was just kind of consensus driven. Um, after lengthy conversation. And what the council has discussed is a tax rate increase that does not exceed 3%. Um, the tax rate projection will adhere to policies regarding valuation increases and the impact of the residential revaluation shall not be considered in those projections. Um, and then we would have clear and consistent messaging regarding the factors to be considered in the projection of the estimated tax rate. Um, there was a lot of conversation at our level about whether or not using the mill rate and tax rate it was an appropriate metrics. Um, and then that, that's where the kind of the consensus came about where we said, yes, it will. But we will also want to be um, uh, cautious of how that message is delivered around the revaluation piece while still looking at the other valuation uh, influences. So there's just what I would call organic growth within the community from other um, economic activity regarding the valuation will still be included. Um, do you think that's a fair? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that organic growth weapon, one, one and a half percent. Yeah, it's there. about one and a half percent, I think, was the average. So we, um, the town council set a policy a few years back with uh, <coughs> uh, Council Will Rowan's uh, input. Um, and uh, we, we kind of look at what is what I call a high, medium, and low value um, based on those projections. It's I believe it's the one and a half or whatever that 10-year average is plus a factor. <coughs> and I think it's... Uh, so many additional basis points. I can't remember exactly the formula in my top of my head, um, but um, it, it comes up with a range for consideration. Is what it does. And that's the conservative, optimistic, yes. pessimistic, yeah. yeah. mid-range. Mid-range. Mid -range. Mid -range. Okay. Yeah. It's actually been pretty accurate, hasn't it? Yeah. It has been very accurate, um, except for some other, uh, except for the outside influences of revaluations, mm -hmm. both last year for a commercial, and then this year was, that's for the residential piece. John, when you say clear and consistent messaging, were there specific bullet points that you guys talked about that you want to make sure we're very clear about? The, the, we did not have um, any uh, specific conversation. Okay. There was just a, a general consensus that, at least, I, and I'm speaking for myself, my interpretation was that, um, you know, 
I don't want to call it one budget, but it's that influence of, you know, we, we are all in this together. We want to be positive about what we uh, want to put forward to the people. Understanding there's some considerations because, you know, the people don't get to vote for our budget, the town's overall budget, but the people do vote for the school's budget. So um, you have a different set of messaging maybe um, than we would. Um, I think that this goal was really, that particular one was more around town council members um, in our conversation than it was about setting an expectation for the schools. And, and really in particular around whether the revaluation impact is included mm -hmm. as a conversation right. piece uh, in that tax rate estimate. That was the source of, say, great yep. confusion and some frustration as we went through the budget process. So the intent here is we set the goal, we've made it clear, let's be consistent from this time forward through adoption on what we're measuring against. And I think the joint communication committees are really kind of working around that too. But I think yeah. <clears throat> that clear messaging in the past, we've had some confusion about what number. And so if there's some way we can just have a clear conversation about what are the numbers and what are the right numbers that we all can agree on. So that's that type of minute. <clears throat> yeah. so, uh, this was not covered, but one thing I, I would like to just mention is that I, um, I thought we had good clarity in terms of what the consensus was in terms of the targets. Um, but I also think that uh, uh, people should understand that we'll look at a wide range of numbers as we go through the process, including year-on-year -year increases in budgets and that sort of thing. So, you know, though we have a goal of this sort, we will be talking about other figures and, and looking at other, you know, at other numbers, you know, as, as we go through the process and deliberate as, as a group, as a, as a joint group and also you know, as a, as a finance committee. Yeah, I think I can accurately predict that both Julie and I will have uh, likely topics and, <clears throat> and investments that will um, exceed that, and, and we'd, we'd like some conversation around that. So I, I appreciate your point. Um, I think it's our job to put these things in front of you, uh, help you appreciate the impact Great. financially and otherwise, yep. service-wise, uh, and then make decisions as to what's the right thing to do. Great. I just want to make sure we're, people don't have a feeling we're departing somehow from a commitment. If you know, over the course of things, we look at additional detail or ask for, for uh, you know, other figures as we go. You know, I think some clarity around that. What we had talked a little bit about is a model that <coughs> the town has adopted is whatever the, the the goal is to kind of deliver a budget close to that. But in the time, maybe you can talk a little bit about. It. I think that's what you were referencing. Yes. You say here, <coughs> here's the budget that we can deliver for that. But here are some things we either can do within that and itemize what those things are, or here are some investments we think really make sense to make, and we can talk about those individually. In the past, that's a model you've followed. Yeah, and in some years, we've actually increased that investment right. in some things because there was a compelling case why that was a good investment for the town. So that's sort of the model we talked a little bit about. Maybe it makes some sense. Is, Here's, here's sort of the baseline budget, but let's talk about what can't be done, and let's talk about what, you know, what other investments might make some sense, if that makes any We follow sense. a very similar process, yeah. and I, I think this year there will be a lot of choices and a lot of conversation to be had, and I would just want a clear commitment up front that um, when we're putting out uh, new proposals or investment requests that just because we're talking about it doesn't necessarily mean that it's happening. And I think that's part of the clear and consistent messaging because sometimes it's like these sound bites get out there and then it becomes, um, you know, like the, the schools are trying to do this or the town is trying to do that, um, which can really be a detractor from us having a really open, honest conversation. <clears throat> and the other thing, too, to, to Tom's point earlier, I know that it feels like the first number that gets out there sometimes is the number that is that resonates the most with folks. So really thinking about how do we work collectively, you know, both separately but also collectively, um, to be able to have those conversations without it creating a lot of sticking power in the community, which I don't know if we can or can't control. But I was going to say exactly that. That you know, big frustration for me is that when we present a budget for first reading. I think it's our intention as town and school leaders that that's a starting point, not an ending point. And a lot of times that's the only thing that goes in the newspaper. That's the only thing that right. goes out into the community, that first number. And there's no opportunity for us to say, but wait, we, you know, we just got started here. Well, and that's exactly what happens. That's the headline. Right. right. That's the thing to write about. And right. then for the next six weeks in budget deliberations, there's no new numbers. 
because there's it's all conversational. Yep. There's no decisions mm-hmm. being made. So you go six weeks with whatever that he- headline started with. So we're it's sensitive to that and we want to help shape that. Yeah. The game. And just to kind of, um, not to be the nerd, uh, charter nerd, so the chart is very specific also about the t- not only the timeline, but also it's very clear that it's about presenting estimates of appropriations and costs and revenues. So it, it truly does treat it as a starting point and not an ending point as part of that budget process. And at the same time, it's very clear about responsibilities because um, I've always been very sensitive that while we can sit and talk about particular programs, council members um, cannot and should not as a whole even um, talk about specific programs and about the value of those programs because that's your responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to be sensitive to that role um, because, you know, in the end it says that um, the council has uh, the only authority is over total appropriation um, for all the departments, including the Board of Education. So um, I, I want to be sensitive to that, make sure that we kind of keep that in mind as we go through that because the fact is, is that even on the appropriation side, if we sit there and say we're only going to appropriate X and it's a, let's say it's a $500,000 less than what's asked for, um, and we're just going to sit there and say, well, we don't want Y program. The fact is the superintendent and the school board can come in and say, you know what, we're still going to have that program. We're just going to reallocate it from someplace else. Right. So there's that autonomy between our groups that really needs to be respected. Yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, we had a really productive finance meeting. Um, I think it's safe to say that, you know, as to not upset the apple cart, like the school board and Julie and Kate have told us that they can operate within the 3% um, mill rate increase as a budget goal. Um, Whether or not we talk about net budget, because I know that there were some town councilors that were more in favor of talking about net budget. Um, Julie and Kate have indicated to us as a committee that they're comfortable you know, with the calculation to work backwards to arrive at a number with in conjunction with Tom, of mm, course. That's great. Um, and so that's something that we're comfortable with. Um, and in terms of being, consi- you know, clear and concise, if this is the budget goal, 3% increase to the mill rate, then we are ready to hit the ground running and work backwards from, from that goal. Great. Great. With the understanding, of course, that we are going, we have anticipated expenses this year as a result of growth um, that may or may not fall within the parameters of that 3% mill rate increase, depending on what that final number is. And so last year, it worked out that a 2.98% ex- uh, increase in our expenditures happened to cor- correspond with a 3% increase in the mill rate. The fact that those two numbers were both close to, you know, the number three was purely <laughs> coincidence. <laughs> and so one thing that I have been, um, you know, very cognizant of trying to work backwards in terms of when Julie does present us with her final numbers, um, that the percent increases that we are going to be presenting are in excess of 3%. That does not mean that we are not being respectful of the, t- the budget goal of an overall mi- Mill increase of three percent. Right. I got that. Okay. <laughs> I don't want anybody else. I got that. I got that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any anything else around objectives and goals? Can yeah, you, I was just going to say. Uh, I hadn't contemplated any line item veto requests, so. You just wanted to put that out there, John. <laughs> You're not already asked. <laughs> Um, well, I, with, oh, go ahead. Just, just one kind of develop on what Julie said about the, the first number is always the one. Is there something we can do to reframe that mm-hmm. when we do the presentations those night, that night? I mean, what would be helpful to get the message out that it's a starting point rather than the Every other flashing light. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. would a statement be messaging. That's, like that's a, a watermark in every slide. I mean, the press will be here. Is it worth trying to craft some type of message right up front? Well, you know, it's interesting, Peter, because I've sat through one or two of these. Uh, one or two. And, yes. and it, it seems like we, we always say it. It's like, okay, this is our starting point. Now we're really going to yeah. dig in. And, you know, you guys have your whole process and going department by department. Yeah. We do the same thing. Um, you know, there's so much that goes on. And, and we talk about what the schedule is. And we put it up there and we say, you know, here are all the meetings that are going to happen. And I, I, I kind of feel like 
what don't you get about that? <laughs> this is headline. But then I live More it every mystery. day. And I, I, I live it every day, so I, I realize I'm not the, the person to articulate the problem. So maybe we should ask uh, the Portland Press Herald what we can do. Yeah, I think um, I think you can't overstate it. And I mean, I like flashing lights. <laughs> you know, <laughs> auditors make good use of uh, disclaimer statements, right? When yeah, they're like three pages. <laughs> yeah. um, Footnotes on every slide. Subject so everyone to a three-page disclaimer at the beginning. Well, the, the way around it is to wait another month before we release the budget. You know, we have better numbers very often. Big well, school and numbers are in in that month of mm -hmm. April, but after we present. We did that as well. Um, you know, we were talking about that earlier, that we used to present the school budget <clears throat> in the beginning of March. And that was absolutely terrible because we had mm -hmm. even worse estimates and very little information from the outside uh, pressures that we faced. We had no GPA, we had no you know, anthem rates and some of those big drivers. And so we actually did push that timeline up a little bit so that when we come out the first week of April, we're a lot closer. But, but there's still a lot that happened in the month of April and into May so that the first reading is never like the second reading. And, and I, 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 I I love your question. I don't know what the answer is. Yeah. You know? Change the chart. Well, I was just going to say think, I mean, something that you think about too as part of the change your fiscal year in the chart. Yes, yeah. I mean, well. it sounds great. Just make that an agenda <coughs> item for next time. Yeah, maybe they can approach the press. Well, we never want to deliver bad news, and so when we're asked to make estimates, we're typically cautious. Right. You know, That's we'll a really probably point, include yeah. a ten percent increase in health care, and always want to uh, underpromise and overdeliver. That when they come in, it comes in at eight, and it's good news. Consequence of that is your starting point of the discussion is somewhat Hi, elevated. So, higher, yeah. the way to correct that is to be a little bolder in those estimates. Uh, the downside of that is we might get bad news as the process unfolds. So, well, I think it's, we have a good example of that last year where we, we decided we were going to be less aggressive on our anthem projections for the school department. And right now, 1% on an anthem rate mm -hmm. change runs us about $170,000, so it's not chump change. So last year we said, well, you know, let's be less aggressive and we'll, we'll do an average. We did some fancy math and we came up with 5%, and then we were hit with an 8% increase. So, you know, Roughly sort of $300,000. Darned if you do and darned if you don't. Yeah. And I don't think there's a solution. I don't think there's a, uh, there's definitely not a perfect solution. I question if there's even a solution. And the reason is because you're dealing with human behavior and how people react to the information, um, and, and in some ways, it's even about our behavior as counselors and school board members and how we react because it it can feed into or feed on how outside groups are responding to the issues that we're faced with. Um, so, you know, and believe me, we have tried different methodologies over the years. I mean, between the forums and average. I mean, I remember back in the day we did advertisements in the paper. I mean, we've tried everything over the years, and there's no way to you know, really kind of, you know, stop that wave of uh, cynicism coming from, you know, some people who look at the budget in the way that they do. Maybe part of the messaging is uh, is to focus on what our results have been. If you look at our history, the issue, mm -hmm. you know, this has always been a challenge at the beginning of the process, but most importantly, it's where we end. And we've consistently, I say we, council and, and board of ed, has consistently sure. met the goal. And unfortunately, it happens in mid-August, and everyone's mm. got their feet stuck in the sand, and no one appreciates it, or it doesn't grab the headlines once again. It's six months later, you know? So maybe it's incumbent on us to toot our own horn a bit more. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of little data points you could put out in a very simple way. Like, you know, here was the budget at first reading, here's the budget at second reading. Wow. Yeah. Here's where we landed on budget estimated tax rate. Here's where we landed on actual tax rate. You'd have just you know a handful of little data points in there. That sounds like like something Larissa could do in her sleep. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't smile. <laughs> I keep having this like visual, and we talked about this. I don't know if it was communications or finance, but you know, really, if we could come up with a collective visual that shows the journey that is the budget process and shows people mm. like we're here, we're over here at the beginning of the road. I have a, a rough sketch of <laughs> see my idea. Oh, there's a drop. Um, so. But it looks like Candyland, right? Kind of, you know. But so basically, here in this, we have to, and I think too, it's even during that. So Tom and I do the presentation. Maybe we start with the visual that says we're just getting started on our journey, and and you know, showing the, 
kind of the timeline and the critical dates that get us to that referendum vote. Um, but then even as the council, as, as you're commenting, you know, I think, again, each of you always gives your comments if you're all saying, like, this is our starting point. Mm -hmm. You know, we know there's going to be refinements and adjustments. And I think just that repetition, hopefully, could be. And, and you know, maybe the Portland Press would say, Scarborough's budget gets started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gets started. If that would help people understand that, you know, we're nowhere near finished. Um, I don't know. But Kate, I, I kind of like that idea of saying, here's where we started from, and here's where we finished up, and historically since we set the goal, <laughs> we've hit 3% yeah. or less since 15 or 14 or something like that, 2015? You know, yeah, since the, I out of curiosity, um, I don't know if you have access to it, but the memo that you shared with the, at the workshop mm -hmm. with that data, if you could share with um, the school board and finance here, and it, it was a great um, you know, tabular depiction of what has occurred um, about the about the tax rate. It actually speaks volumes to the progress that we made yeah, we since 2014, mm -hmm. in particular. I think we might have um, a similar view of it as well that Kate produced for us. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say I, yeah. I, I have a, a chart that's three pages because I can never say anything in a simple way, <laughs> um, which is why we need Larissa. <laughs> but um, you know, basically, kind of the same idea for the school board to. So if we're working backwards from that 3% goal or 3% or less goal, what does that mean for us? Right. You know, so we've got a chart that shows us the change in our uh, expenditures, the change in our revenues, use of fund balance, that kind of stuff. So, and then our net budget for just the schools. And then what does that translate to in terms of the actual increase on the tax rate? So we've been looking at that same kind of data. Mm -hmm. And our favorite graph that shows the school funding history. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The line going up and the line going down. Let's see. GPA? Tax rate. Yeah. I think we can put some energy into coming up with some sort of graphic display that, that reports a little history that shows mm. a higher starting point and a lower ending mm. point. I think that's going to show consistently over <laughs> recent right. past. Since you show, if you show the last five mm. years and what that uh, trend is <clears throat> and compare that to the, the uh, previous five years to that, that tells a very significant story, I think, in this town yeah. about fiscal management and investment. Um, guaranteed, there are other things like Dawn has said, you know, because we've been working on our side. You know, there's been a, a very strong push around forecasting. Well, you know, we're all in some form of business. Forecasting requires not you not to look at just one component. It's every economic influence that goes into it, <coughs> um, which includes revenues, expenses, tax value, commit, you know, everything. So. Um, but sometimes you can only have so much information in a chart before it becomes diluted and not That's really why meaningful. I'm wondering if even whether it's in the town newsletter or a letter in the leader or a letter to the Portland Press Herald, if they would publish a, something to that effect where we're saying, you know, rest assured Scarborough voters, you know, this process takes place each year. And then you're, we kind of walk them through that sort those data points and showing them that year after mm -hmm. year, this is what our process has looked like, and this year will be much the same. But do that before even any FY20 numbers come out. Yep. Um, Managing expectation. Right, and so we're kind of setting that foundation and framing yeah. what's about to happen. So what's that the way people. The best predictor of features is history or the past, yeah. the past, something like that. So it, that should give folks comfort mm -hmm. that. Hang, hang on, stick with us. Uh, we get there. It gets it's ugly. It's ugly sometimes. We get there. Mm -hmm. That could be um, a really great joint communication. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so we really so we've already kind of covered the budget targets, right? I think so. About uh, what are our next steps? So um, outside of ske scheduling another meeting, I think the next meeting, and we can have either. Um, so the process that we undertake as a town council finance is that we schedule meetings with all of our departments, including the Department of Education, for their formal presentation of the budget. Um, we can. Um, do that in this format. Um, so normally it's literally it's the three of us sitting up there with the manager and then you guys have a table and it's kind of this non-engagement kind of process. We can come back and do you know this type of discussion that's a, um, a little less formal and casual so, and have a conversation. I'm it, you know unless these, if these two gentlemen disagree I'm open to suggestions about how we want to do that and if we need more than one meeting 
because of the size of the budget, I mean, it's the largest department, um, we can do that. Um, I know that we've scheduled, um, I think the first meeting is April 6th? April, April 8th, 8th is what I have um, and, from Colette. And um, I believe we've dedicated that meeting that just to the just school department. School, right? From 5 to 6 30. And we also have a joint meeting on the calendar for 13th. 10th of April? Oh, well, the 13th of March, yeah. yeah. Is the next one that we have. 13th? Yeah. March 13 is a Wednesday evening at 5 30. You can't do that. Though, right. So we might need to change that, anyways. So the question um, I would have, so let's take them, if you don't mind, sir, one at a time. On the 313 joint, what would we need to accomplish before the presentation at that meeting? Would we need to um, review maybe um, staff's recommendation regarding that messaging piece? Um, do we want to cover any substantive, you know, presentations from the school department regarding their programs? I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily have, I mean, I think the, let's move the, the communication piece to the communi the joint mm -hmm. communications meeting, which again, both April sure. and I are on. So, mm -hmm. so we'll cover that um, as, as long as you guys are okay with that as part of this group. Um, and then I don't know, is there anything else that you think we would need to cover on the 13th? It's an interesting no. time point because we don't really have the budget proposal to talk about. So it would be it would be a more high level conversation, maybe, you know, the cost drivers that we're seeing, but we already had a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, Tom? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure there'd be a whole lot I'm to talk about. I'm happy cutting them. meetings. We all, we all yeah. have enough meetings. Yes. So. Yes. I believe this is true. The only thing I would say is maybe coming back together after the joint, the joint communications crafts that. Yep. Mm -hmm that framing message or however, whatever we're going to call that. And maybe talk about what data points we can provide for that. Yeah. But I think we could do that through email as well or other communications. Yeah. yeah. Why don't we take that offline and talk sure. to Hillary and Paul mm -hmm. and see when the next, I don't even recall off the top of my I, head when our I'm next communications it, meeting is. And then come, potentially come back to this group with yeah. that. So, so if you could, um, um, as soon as uh, something is agreed to at the committee level, because I think uh, so, Dawn is on the committee as well, I believe. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Dawn, Paul, yep. and Katie on our Perfect. side. Is uh, um, if you could share that yep. um, in advance, um, and, and I'll, you know, I'll take the least from my perspective. Um, whenever I chair something in particular, I try to get my mindset in a mode where even if I have disagreement with the presentation, that I become a supporter of it in advance. And so, I just want to make sure I understand what's in that. Um, so I can be an advocate uh, for the process. Absolutely. Um, and we can vet through any, I can't imagine disagreeing with it, but the, yeah. I just want to see it, if you don't mind. So if we can, sure. if it's Dawn or if everyone can share it yeah. before that group meeting. Yeah, that's done. Do you know off the top of your head what our next one is? I don't recall. I have a calendar up here, but I, yeah. I haven't I spotted it yet. I don't see yeah. one. I don't think have we have one. I don't think we still talk to them about that. We talked about the, the, the Round table tables, meeting, or right. yeah, we keep changing the name of it. No, it's yeah. set. It's round table. <laughs> it's round table. Uh, the table That's on the twenty sixth at six p.m. So, <laughs> so, 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 so then moving on from there. Yeah. So I just so just to add to that, because you know, and I wasn't here for that first meeting, so again, I apologize if when we talked about the norms and pieces. So the reason why I bring that up is that in my mind, board governance is that when we have an agreement, you know, you can fight all you want to get to the decision point, but once you come up with a decision. The six of us are really the advocates for the budget that comes out of our committees um, as in front of the town, in yeah. front of the council, so that we can, um, you know, kind of share that norm uh, of respect. And so that's why I'm asking just to see it with this kind of thing. Yeah, totally appreciate so. that. So, um, so that, then that, that leaves April 6th. Yeah. Um, so do we want to do you, can you do it all in an hour and a half? Do you think we need to just go because we're going to have to, you know, produce public notices. Do you want to do it in two hours? So, so I hear that we're, we're April 8th. April 8th. Yeah. April 8th. Yeah. April 8th. April 8th. April 8th. Yeah. April 8th is a Monday. So that's can after we we've March presented 6th. first reading. Yeah, right. right. It's um, the, it's fitting in with the finance committee on the town side's review after first reading. Yeah, so I think that you'll have the high-level overview. At the regular meeting. At the pr presentation. At the presentation. Pr presentation. Um, we also have two half-day workshops with our full leadership team mm -hmm. and the school board yeah. that, of course, you all are welcome to uh, attend if you'd like yeah. to hear from principals and directors directly about the, their budgets. But I think by then, 
I, I think 90 minutes will be plenty. Okay. Um, and what was that time again? Uh, Colette gave me 5 to 6.30. Do you agree? April Do you guys agree? Yeah. I think 90 minutes is enough. Oh, there's a lot. Hi. It's because of uh, scheduling rooms. Yeah. Okay. Um, no problem. Presentation, but she's not. All right. Um, well, that's, that's what I was going to say. We, we, we decided that we didn't need March 6th, that we'll just go straight 13th. into April. Yeah. March, March 13th. 13th. Yeah. We're just going to go straight to April 8th. And we're going to be immersed in budget preparation. Yeah. Uh, so right up until that. Selfishly staffed. <laughs> but I think, like not to. as Julie mentioned, I mean, it's a long meeting. If you guys are available, the workshops could be interesting for you to attend as well. I've been there before. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I think that people who so on the council right who have attended the workshops, I would say, have found it helpful. I know, yep. Peter, you've been mm -hmm. to at yeah. least pieces of them. And yep. Yep. It's the, the unique opportunity that we have there is similar to what you folks have when you have people from the departments coming yeah. to do presentations where you're actually talking to the folks in the trenches and, and getting the real scoop. As the school board liaison, I'll put in a plug with Paul to have him make sure that he that. That's good. Mm -hmm. announces those and maybe the peer pressures his counselors into attending those. What are the dates <laughs> of those to say? Second, April, second, and third. Second is 8.30 to 11. In the morning. And the third is 4 to 6 30. Thank you. Leading right up to our joint presentation on the third. And on then the fourth, fourth, if you want to hear more about the school board, <laughs> at our <laughs> presentation <laughs> to the school board for their first reading. And so we do try to vary sort of, you know, how the depth and the, the breadth of each presentation. So, so um, so, um, Julie. Do you think that um, would your presentation be similar to the pro in the past, where you focus on um, primary investments or new investments and in significant uh, initiatives, like new initiatives? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we'll definitely be talking about new investments. What's in this budget? Um, what are we maintaining? What are we realigning? Um, then we'll also talk about unmet needs. Yes, so that'll of course. be very clear as well. Um, but I think we're just going to do some. Uh, finessing of what we did last year because that, that seemed to work well both with what we put in the budget book but yeah. also the one pagers that we created um, got good feedback from that. If, if you don't mind I'd like to ask one favor. Mm -hmm. So um, um, although everything is subject to change in Augusta mm -hmm. um, with the good news um, so far of the $620,000 increase in funding I'd like to understand um, how that is specifically impacting the budget uh, to support those new initiatives and investments. Because I think that needs to be, um, uh, what's the word, uh, highlighted and uh, sure. If you, know, if you know what I mean. I, I don't know that it's going to be supporting any new initiatives per okay. se because it's just our GPA. Yeah. Um, and we so now we get three point three million instead of two point seven million yeah. in GPA, but you know on a almost fifty million dollar budget, it's just to me that what that does is it allows us to accomplish what we need to. Um, and ask that's six hundred and twenty three thousand dollars less, yeah. assuming that we so, become a part yeah. of the regional service center <laughs> that so, we have to ask our taxpayers for. So I guess um, not to be the, I'm going to just get to the point. Um, so the, uh, and I guess what I would like to understand is if you don't receive the money, what happens? And the reason is that there's conversation right now. I don't think it's actually a bill that has been passed yet or present. It's it's in its either draft format or it's been at least drafted and maybe before education that there might be another change to the funding formula. Mm -hmm. um, I was told today that there was a request or something regarding, and I don't know the full details because mm -hmm. I literally just heard about it an hour ago, where they're changing the average from two years um, regarding um, local, some, valuation. local valuation to three years, yeah. and that that could have a negative impact on the formula to Scarborough. So again, so, while we're promised 620000 more, we could actually not end up with that. But so the only unless reason... You, unless, sorry, Julie... Um, unless the they're thing. looking at the minimum receiver statute, it won't have an impact on us. Right. Because we're already, uh, through the formula, right. we were only slated to receive about $1.7 yeah. million. Dollars. So it's yeah. only the minimum receiver statute right now that's sending us that GPA. Okay. I'm just, one thing I learned yeah. the last time we were supposed to get an increase, they went and changed the formula mm -hmm. in some areas, and then it became, it was like, it was really null and void. Yeah. So I just want to understand what happens, it, regardless of the components. If, sure. If we don't get that six hundred twenty thousand, what does it do to you? And so yeah. I asked Julie yeah. and Kate that exact question, 
was what imp what is the actual impact yeah. impact of this additional six hundred and twenty thousand yeah. dollars for this year? I wanted to know for my own clarification whether that was something that we could view as in addition to still falling within the three percent increase to the mill rate, or whether this needed to be incorporated into that number as well. And Julie said this needs to be incorporated into that estimated three yep. percent increase, which means if we didn't receive that money from the state, we would have to ask the taxpayers for it. Yep. And, and again, because we're minimum receivers, like per statute, this is the minimum amount that they could give us. So even if they were to make changes to the formula, unless they change that, the, the minimum receiver yeah. statute, we're still going to get that amount of money. Um, the, the one big, the reason why we see that big increase this year is, uh, I would, <clears throat> I'm sure I have it in front of me, but if you, when you look on page five of our ED 279, this is really like the easiest place to, to see this happen. And this is last year's, but um, it's good to look at last year's too. And maybe we can make a slide that shows this because this shows you the total allocation. And so you'll see that it's, um, let me use this year so I don't put confusing numbers out there. So you'll see that this year, as Kate was saying, that according to the formula, they were saying, okay, Scarborough, with your almost 3,000 kids, this is your total allocation, so your local contribution is this. Um, so 34, I'm just going to round, you know, 34.1 million <coughs> total allocation. So our local contribution was going to have to be 32.4 million. Um, and then, so the state was going to give us 1.7. But that triggers the minimum receiver statute and says, oh, that's not what, that's not enough because we're not meeting the minimum threshold. So there's an adjustment here, to, and they use our special education cost from two years ago to make this adjustment. Last year, the adjustment was based on 40% of our special education costs. This year, it's based on 45% of our special education costs. So they, you see that adjustment. They said, oh, we have to give you $1.5 million more to meet that minimum requirement. Yep. So that's how we get to the $3.2 million. Down here is where you see this of uh, these other adjustments. And so down here, number eight, is that regionalization and efficiency assistance. This is the this was our local, local question, question number one last year. That's a big old and line. we had to get back $43,000 yeah. yeah. because our voters um, said, said no. no. This year, if our voters say no, we have to give back $83 million. Wow. Or $1,000. Sure <laughs> 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 we are not saying no. See that headline? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 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 that on the headline. Um, we'll really get attention. Um, and so, What's, what's important to, to know about this, because we're minimum receivers, it, it, it literally is an addition to what our allocation would be. It really is it like a win-win for Scarborough. And so another bill, I think, talk addresses um, putting that money back into the system, system yes. admin. If that were to happen, that would be a detriment to Scarborough because it would get lost in the, the, the current formula as it's calculated because we're not even meeting threshold if that makes sense so the fact that it's it's additional um, or it's an incentive um, and is outside of the formula is a is huge literally a big win yes. yes. if, if it goes back okay. it'll be lost um, in the formula yeah so for um, us not for others but for us it would I'm be trying to remember what year was and if you were superintendent or if um, uh, the last gentleman was all of a sudden I can't remember Dr. Um, there was one year where we ended up getting Quite a bit of money back. Uh, quite, uh, there was an increase. Something happened. I can't, uh, the legislature came in and gave, I want to say, like 20 or $30 million extra. Um, and then Scarborough was, um, got a pretty sizable increase. And there, it's the community's reaction at the time, and I'm kind of, um, I don't want to say dumbing it down, but it, I'm going to bring it down to that whole messaging piece. There was an outcry, and everyone's like, oh, we need that for tax relief. Yes. Yeah. Right? Um, so I don't remember what year it was. And I, I, I'm just saying is that it was part of the presentation, if we can bring that to the to the level in which everyone can understand that educational funding, um, even if it's a reimbursement for educational expenses that were already spent for special education, has to go to education, that it, it's not a tax relief program. So I just want that to be, that's why I'm yeah. kind of getting around that, because I don't want to have people saying, oh, you know, you're getting six hundred twenty thousand dollars back, they should come back to the voters. Right. Now, that was actually a statute that said oh, that we had to give it back, right? Yeah. Well, that we, there, were, there were only a couple of things that we could do with it because the GPA was added after right. most budgets were approved. Right. So what we're hopeful of is that 
You folks in Augusta don't do anything cuckoo after we approve our budget. <laughs> no, I won't. I can't guarantee anything for anybody else. But, but I, I hear what you're saying about the messaging around it's, that. And so I think that it would be good to test drive that with this group and maybe some of you know, our community members right. as, we, as we pull yeah. it together. Because I think that's what it always comes down to. Mm -hmm. How do you simplify it in a way that it resonates with folks? Um, and as I was saying earlier, I think things are crystal clear, but that's only because well, I do well, it all day long. Right. Right. I'm why not the right person. That money? And the reason why we got that money is the way they calculated on the expenses for two years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. taken me uh, like a month and a half to, for it to be clear, so <laughs> I understand why yeah, it's not yeah. clear to people. Yeah. When yeah. they're just getting the money there. bits yeah. and Some different bucks. drafts of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so keep in, sorry. Yep. So do we have to bring that back to the voters about that 83000 Yes. Yes. So uh, technically, mm -hmm. this is bizarre, but no, technically we don't have to. The school board, because now the regional service center has been formed, we had to before because it didn't exist. Now it's formed. There is, in our interlocal agreement, it does say that the local school board could choose to just act on that. However, our school board believes, and correct me if I'm wrong, that because we asked our voters that we should go back to our voters. Mm. But according to, to the that. way, right, to confirm that. I guess what I was going to suggest then, if we have to, if we do go back to the voters, that maybe what we do is we try and do some communications mm -hmm. around that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. The consequence yeah. of not. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, it, it's a significant, um, it's a, a significant revenue Increase for us so comparative to what else? To add on to what Joanne mentioned on the messaging of the on the special education funding that increase, mm -hmm. I think she's one hundred percent right. If you tell them why it happened, um, and explain that to them, I hope that we not only talk about the, the formula, the reimbursement formula, um, that you know the forty to forty five percent yeah. um, strongly um, would recommend personally. That you it, you have to talk about the amount of money that goes at the front end of that formula, which is significantly higher, because that is what created it. As well. Yeah. yeah. I think that what you just did is is really helpful in all phases of the conversations mm -hmm. that we have. I mean, I think that you need to um, consider that anybody could join the conversation at any time or turn on their yeah. TV at any time or read half the article. And I think that, you know, the, the Sebago partnership, but if, if we're, if we're going to talk about that, we make sure we're not using acronyms and we make sure we summarize it. And I think that that's something that we can do easily and just yep. break it down into very simple terms after each portion of the discussion so that we are ensuring that people will understand that conversation. Absolutely. I was really happy to see that when the Portland Press Herald published their article that they included that piece of it. Because when initially when the reporter called, she was like, oh, Scarborough, you know, 26% increase in state funding. I was like, time out. <laughs> let, me, let me explain it. you got to look at all the numbers and understand that we're still minimum receivers. Um, and then it was also an opportunity, I felt, to point out the 83000 and say this is something we're coming back to our voters for. And so if you could please add that into the article. And she did. So I was happy about that. Yeah. One win in the press. Can I ask a question just to clarify? So we've just enumerated um, a bunch of things that need to be communicated and reinforced and booked and executed. And who who is the owner of this? I mean, I and I be the first to apologize for showing up late to a meeting that I didn't know I was supposed to be here at five o'clock today. So I mean, I so how, how who's the owner of this? And are we, do we have a you know, one place where we publish this? Because I think that, you know, I've been working off something like this that we did together, but where, where is there, you know, where can we direct people to go to one place instead of two websites? The budget portal. Yeah. That is our one place okay. that we share both all of our school okay. finance information goes there and all the town Great. finance information. So that should be the one-stop shop. Great. The only caveat to that is that right now it has last year's report. Right. So that Because I, you know, we're running, we're going down the runway here, and uh, it's like, uh, 
you know, not sure we're talking to the air control tower, you know. So I, I you know, I'm, I'm uh, one of the people in both committees. So I just, I would say whatever we can do to accelerate that and direct people that way and make sure our messaging is, is reinforced there uh, should help us. I think more generally, at least my opinion is that's part of that's on us, right? That's yeah. why we formed that joint committee as well. So I think yeah. we need to get back together yeah. and start talking about how we get these points out ahead yeah. and, and not be so reactive. Yeah. So I, we've got a communications committee meeting on Monday, uh, a town communications. Okay. So we'll talk about that. I don't think it's an agenda item, but it is now. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thanks. Good Thank order. You. Well, and, and what Thanks. we so, rely on on you folks for is to let us know what are those data points that are going to resonate, and you know what are the things that that you're hearing from your constituents that make a difference in their yes. thinking. And that way, you know, I could give you this much information, but it's not going to be helpful. Yeah. I'd love to give you the the right piece of information. Great. Well, I think the discussion we just had highlighted that. I I know at least on the other side, from the town side, I. I was on the phone with somebody before I came over here asking about assessments and valuations and how that's all going to work. So, you know, those are you know, those are top of mind issues. Yeah, yeah. It is. yeah. yeah it's really complex stuff. Great. And I guess just my humble apologies with Don's comment. I didn't realize it was supposed to be five, so I apologize. <laughs> I think it was staff that we covered what we think was to, so. so I'm so sorry. And just so you know, we did not start the meeting until 5.30, so we just sat around and... <laughs> sorry. Um, I got to know, each other. About it. I got to know them. It's a good, it's a good it's opportunity to ice break. Uh, so, in the interest of communication, was anybody taking notes? Because I took some notes. I could just type some stuff up. That would be wonderful. Thank you so yeah. much for Thank your you. gracious <laughs> offer. <Yeah. laughs> that, that'll be in my spare time. I did just want to ask about the April 8th meeting. Do you guys have that on your calendars? We do, yeah. Okay. So I don't have it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Exactly. You do? Mm -hmm. April 8th it's April? on the big. Candy colored one, but I, again, that wasn't really posted very okay. thoroughly yet. So I think we probably ought to do a review of the whole thing on, yeah. on Monday when we get together and okay. to make sure we've got everything mapped out. So make sure I have that done on our Monday agenda. Great. All right. 3% with lots of flexibility and open mindedness, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the agreement. That's the starting point, right? It's <laughs> and, and, and desire to learn more about other figures. <laughs> Finalize that the council will formally adopt this goal and they've got some community relations goals. Uh, but they'll, this will be before them at their next meeting next week, just okay. so we can cement it in the record, so to speak. Okay. And uh, yep. hopefully, there'll be no confusion. Good, great. And with that, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, great. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. you. Thank you. Thank thank you staff, for staying late today. Appreciate it very much. Thank Thanks. you. No, I don't. We're going to take a five-minute break and come back. Are you sure? I'm going to move to Santa Rosa. That's what the story sounds like.
I'm one of those, I'm like, I've got to engage and I've got to be able to sit down and listen to the line. Good evening, everyone. It's about 6.25. Um, this is the um, um, Town Council's Finance Committee meeting for Wednesday, February 27th. We're located in Council Chambers A. Um, we're starting a little late. We just had a uh, joint workshop with the School Board's Finance Committee people, um, members as well as their staff. I thought it was a very good meeting, so thank you to them for uh, joining us earlier. Um, with that, I, for the note for the minutes, that all members are present. We also have our staff um, with us as well. And uh, with that, I'll move into item number three, approval of the minutes for January 23rd, 2019 is our motion. Motion to approve. And second. Uh, I had a question on this one, uh, on possible future discussion items. You know, I know we had talked uh, from time to time about uh, uh, some sort of baseline and analysis of efficiency and value. Now, I don't have the exact wording here, but um, I know we talked about that, and I, I know we specifically made a point not to bring it up uh, in the, uh, you know, in the session that involved the school last time we met, but I'd like to make sure that gets added, if not to these minutes, but to, you know, the running list of potential future agenda items. Absolutely. So I'll um, take the second, as, um, I'll take your second um, on the motion and then um, for correction purposes, if we can ask um, Ms. Matheson, can we add an item number nine Thanks. in reference of Councillor Hamill's um, request. Number nine. Yep. Can you restate it? So uh, yeah, I can. I've done it three times now from memory, but now it's, it's failing me. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but it it had to do with asking the town for uh, an analysis, some sort of benchmarking on um, value and efficiency of services. Uh, and I will follow up with uh, more precise wording. I just don't have the email handy. Is that the one you had sent a while back? Pardon? Is that the one you had sent a while back? On uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we talked about some type of survey process, yeah. 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 something else, and I can't remember. Yeah, the number one is survey value of services. Okay, that came That's it? On last year. Okay, so yeah. I didn't recognize it as such. So, yeah. um, but it's, it's not only value, but it's also cost and efficiency. So I think that was the distinction. And thanks, Co-op, for the reminder. So if we can amend uh, number one to include the additional emphasis that the counselor has. Yeah. I think that would be yeah. to include value of services and including cost and efficiencies analysis or something. Sorry. Any other corrections or edits requested? <coughs> Not seeing any all in favor of the motion as amended. It's unanimous three to zero. Um, moving into the review of budget goals with the school's finance committee. Um, I actually have already, can I borrow your, um, your budget goal document? Yeah, the top sheet. Yeah, the top sheet. Sorry, I already sure. Sure. Thank you. Um, I threw it away thinking I was going to remember it. So just <laughs> for the public, uh, if you didn't catch us during our workshop, the town council actually had a workshop um, at its last meeting and set a goal that will be formalized at our next meeting, a formal uh, town council meeting. And that goal is um, to set a tax rate increase not to exceed 3%. The tax rate projection will adhere to policies regarding valuation increases and the impact of the residential revaluation shall not be considered in these projections. Clear and consistent messaging regarding the factors to be considered in the projection of the estimated tax rate. Um, 
you know, just to highlight what was what we discussed before, this was a consensus item um, in which we all agreed um, to kind of follow um, in order to get through this budget and to promote that. Um, I think that um, on the high level, you know, um, there has been some concern um, regarding the revaluations that have occurred over the last two years, and it's not just a revaluation of the residential piece that's undertaken now, but also the impact of what the commercial side was. <clears throat> so we brought up this consensus, and the bigger issue was really about the clear messaging that we want to make sure that we have coming out of not only the committee, um, our finance committee, but also out of the town council in relationship with the school board and their finance committee, um, and making sure that we have a clear and consistent message across the board um, so that um, I think the end goal is that we have um, a budget that passes um, not only through the town council, but one that is also approved, um, at least a school budget that is approved by um, the town on its first uh, first pass through. Um, I know that's a different kind of summary. I was trying to remember what I said before. I uh, didn't know if there was anything that Peter or Don, if you wanted to add to that. And that's, I, I just wanted to reiterate the point that I made in the earlier uh, meeting is that uh, though we have committed to a pretty concise uh, target and a description of how we're going to handle the, uh, uh, the reval, uh, I, I just want to make sure that everybody uh, realizes we will be looking at a wide range of other facts and figures and data, so I don't want, want us to uh, run a, a foul of expectations when we start getting into detailed review in subsequent meetings, you know, that that was not reflected precisely uh, you know, in the targets, but it needs, you know, by, by necessity, it needs to be part of that process. So. Anything you want to add? Only, I think, <clears throat> as we just discussed in our meeting, that, you know, again, that the, the budgets will be a starting point. Um, and what we're requesting is that we start to see budgets that come in at the target, and then we will have, as we do every year, those conversations about what services we might not be deliver within that budget, and investments that we may want to consider making will all be part of the process. But that was that was consensus around that also. Okay. <clears throat> Tom, you want to add anything, or Ruth, or no? Okay, I'm pleased that it's it's that exact, and that we're making darn sure that it's clear to all involved and all concerned. And now our job is to make sure we. Can message that out oh. early, often, and anyone will listen. Great. Uh, moving into item five, discussion items for this evening. The first is financial statements for the period ending December 31st, 2018. And I'll turn it over to Tom and to uh, Ruth and staff. These financials, uh, of course, you, you heard from your auditor, so his was a much higher level analysis. He's prepared to take you through some further details, but uh, it's the same information, the same kind of financial results that uh, that was uh, shared by the auditor just uh, last week, actually. But uh, Ruth's prepared things in the normal format, so you can see year to year and so on and so forth. So if you don't mind, I'd defer to Ruth to yep, walk absolutely. you through it. So I guess, um, as Tom said, and I don't know if you want, I can do a quick overview of the types of reports we have here for the new finance committee person. Guys. And yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, new guy. Actually, Ruth, thank you. Before you get to the high level, can you can we just start with your executive summary? Sure. And I just had two quick questions. Okay. One is, and just just refresh my memory. Down in your next to last paragraph, you talk about the total fund balance decreased. Um, you know, by five hundred thousand, we plan to use two million. Can you refresh? What did? The two million um, was part of the unspent Wentworth funds. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And That's so right. the school okay. used that, that as part of their gotcha. fund balance. Yeah, okay. And then, I remember uh, that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. But they only ended up using five hundred thousand of it, so that's kind of a positive for the town. Uh, although it did end up reducing our overall fund balance in general, we did make up some of that through our. Yeah. Uh, and I, can, I, can, I can also do that. all of the Wentworth funds. The Wentworth funds. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. 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 Right. You Seriously. You I was actually, even though we said, I know, right? even though we said March 1st, <laughs> since, we, since we have a meeting, it's all right, thank you, Kate. Next. Thank you. Is that, I mean, it's construction? You're so welcome. Is it just time? Yeah, it's fast. I think it had to do with no, the apartment buildings on the high deep wage. The, 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 the,
they oh, all asked for those oh, permits up front, so that gotcha. was like don't uh, appreciate us. No. No. We're gonna get I was going to say, don't appreciate us. Give it six yeah. months, and uh, <laughs> this entire group will change. Yeah. Yeah. We're back to historical <laughs> levels, but I don't <laughs> think that's a real concern or watch. So, so we'll be on budget, so to speak, you think, with building permits? For right, I don't think we increased it because of that. I okay. think our budget's yeah. still okay. the yeah. same as last year. So. Thank you. But it is a factor if we start to look at, you know, if we do our comparisons between the two years and things. So. Thank you. So now, I'll, now the tutorial on will be good for me too. So we know what. So the the first section is is what I call an executive summary. It kind of gives a high overview of where I think we've been over the past, well, in this case through December 31st. So for the first six months, and then the the actual reports start off with the balance sheet accounts for the general fund only and that includes the school the town and the school's adult education and we've consolidated it because we actually have like a bazillion accounts but uh, we've consolidated it down and it kind of has a comparison of last year with this year at the same time and what the variances are uh, the next sheet shows a comparative year to date of expenditures, what we budgeted, what we spent, and uh, and a comparison of last year to that. And then below that, it kind of gives us, I, I kind of give a little review of why some of these might be a little bit different or changes from year to year. What I find interesting is that even though the budget went up for the town by a couple million, the total percentage spent is like right on. They're both at 61.3 or 4 percent so they're you know it's they're pretty consistent even though so the budgets are I guess the way I look at it is we have things we have to spend during certain times of the year such as we make our debt payments in October debt and principal and interest and then county tax so those are big drivers and those show up right away and uh, so and we are do those have typically predictable from a timing standpoint yeah, those by county tax, by state or county law, I'm not sure whose law it is, but we have to theoretically pay it by September 1st. However, because our tax due date is after that, we have until November 1st. If we don't pay it by November 1st, interest accrues back to, and then we have to pay interest on it. So we always make sure we. Debt service pay is that. very predictable. Right. Debt yeah. service is predictable depending on you know what our level of debt is, okay. and that's one principal payment and one interest payment, and then in May, we make a second interest payment. Okay. okay. Thank you. And then the next page is our comparative year-to-date revenues. That's page five on this. And again, it compares last year to this year. I do provide an explanation of some of the differences and also kind of where we are after six months of the year in terms of our property tax collection. So it kind of gives an you know, theoretically, after six months, we should be at 50%, and we're typically better than that each year, so. Yeah. So is our expectation that kind of end at 100% when the budget year is done and everything is spent, uh, you know, and, and with the exception, I, I suppose, of a few uh, pluses and minuses? Is that? Theoretically, we should be at 100% spent, right. but as with everything, you know, some right. departments are underspent, right. some might be over a little bit. So I had one question, and I know this may get seem like a real micro <coughs> one. But say, for example, we we funded something to, you know, sort of, sort of, say, for example, smart light software at Dunstan, and we didn't implement it in this fiscal year. What happens to that? Does it roll back? Do we carry it forward? It depends on most capital items will carry into the next year mm -hmm. because most of the time they're supposed to be a one-year thing, but yeah. sometimes, like public safety, is the public safety building is going to be a multi-year project. Okay. It also depends on whether we, how we were planning to fund it. So if we were going to appropriate those monies, uh, the project will carry. The monies will just stay there until they actually finish the carry project, forward. carry forward, or or somebody says tells us that okay. no, nope, the project's not going forward. Close it. Uh, if it's bond money, we have to keep it open because okay. we can only use it for that. And then once the project's done, if there's ex extra bond money left over. That closest to the general fund, but again, can only be used to pay off uh, Great. debt interest. Great. And is there any analysis of that that you do overall to show the you know carry forwards and that sort of thing, or is that typically reflected just in department department level detail? No, we do uh, 
in the audit on in the footnotes there's a something that's called I'm not sure what it's called but it's kind of like a carry forward listing okay and it's a signed Great. fund balance I think Great. is what okay. it is because so, sometimes you know when I step by for extra credit I'll if you oh. could take a few minutes yes. and show me come on up we always <laughs> welcome back thanks and then Thank from you. an operating point of view uh, monies that go unspent for whatever reason I mean your budget a budget is your best estimate of what and then life happens right um, I think you made a point of public safety returning some uh, $265,000, I think the number was, roughly speaking. Well, that, that includes police, fire, EMS. There's a whole strange, yeah. expensive kettle of fish. And, you know, uh, I think it was 80 from fire, 80 from police. And those sorts of amounts over 2 and $3 million budgets are actually really, really small amounts. Right. That's the difference between someone starting October 1 and we budgeted them for August 1. Uh, those sorts of nuances make a big difference. Uh, but those monies that go un unspent fall to fund balance okay. unless a decision is made. Go to the uh, If it's operating budget, if, that just goes to fund balance, I unassigned see. fund balance. But, but if it's if it were, were capitalized, then it has to go back to that. Right. Or bonded. If it were bonded, right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. That's great. Thanks very yeah. much. So then page six shows uh, because as elected officials, you're responsible for all of the finances of the town, not just the general fund. This kind of gives a breakdown of the other funds within the town. So we have special revenues, school in town, capital projects, school in town. And uh, then we also have on the town side, three cemeteries that we, well, trust funds essentially that we maintain. And then the school has scholarship programs and their food nutrition program. So we kind of highlight the expenditures and reven revenues for those. And then the last two pages, the page seven shows the school department specifically. These aren't technically the same order that the school uses, however, they used to. It's just that this, in order for me to use the one they're using, I, you have to do a lot of gyrations that yep. we don't do. Uh, staffing wise, we don't have the <clears throat> ability to do that. So we, this is the same format that is in the audit also. Can I ask a question? Sure. <coughs> Sorry, and I need to go back to page six. Yep. So, can you, um, between fund 1200 and fund, um, is there any relationship or correlation between the unexpected increase of 1.5 million in fund 1200 and then the decrease, the non spending, or the non realization in 1310? I mean, what, what is that special revenue we, we have $1.5 million this year and we didn't know about? That, um, you know that some yeah. of the planning revenues, like impact fees, go into this. Also, um, TIF revenues essentially start here, and then we transfer between general fund and here. I mean, I can look it up specifically and let you know what makes up those numbers. Yeah, I but, just, uh, uh, affordable housing is a big number. Affordable housing the, the in there. The fees is in there. The affordable housing money that's a that big we number. collect. Wait, I don't that, think we had that, that much. Is that Beacon? Yeah, is yeah that it's not all of it, but it's probably five oh, or six hundred thousand is just yeah, that project so alone because yeah. they they really were yeah, ramping we had up like, big time. We had like three or four hundred thousand in there before. <clears throat> the well, no, because this is revenue in a year, so even if we right. had a balance in it before, it wouldn't be. In yeah, it doesn't explain that. It would not be in this one five, but yeah. I would say at least a third or if, if you could just send a note, that'd be. Yeah, five hundred thousand of it is rescue billing. This what? Through December, rescue billing. EMS billing. EMS, EMS ambulance billing. So that's the money uh, we do accrue that. I mean, uh, normally we're on a cash basis. This is an accrual basis. So when, when the we record the revenue as soon as it's been invoiced. So okay. uh, so that's part and of it. And then when it gets uh, when it comes in, it gets reallocated to whatever. And then we allocate it to the general fund. Yeah. Um, school development impact fees are up. That's about another two hundred thousand. Right. And then there was another big one. Next TIF, we, we collect New England Expedition. They pay us their taxes. We turn around and mm -hmm. give it back to give them essentially back. until until they hit their limit. So that's another two hundred thirty thousand. So those are the big pieces, and then there's a lots of little ones. Yep, and that's fine. I don't need any more information. 116 was the affordable housing. How much? 116. 116. Oh, 117. Quick, also, a quick question on page 5. 
on item number 96, your footnotes 96, that miscellaneous revenue of 120, didn't we earmark that for public safety? So do we, does that need to go to reserve or something at some point? Um, or at some point it would probably will get moved at year end. We move it, you haven't yet. Yes. I mean, I presented it when we talked about oh, the that was budget in a workshop, challenges. I think. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. didn't take any formal action, but <clears throat> that was one of the things I put on the table that is un budgeted revenue kind of yeah. gift from heaven. So the council's not taking formal action. I think he basically said, go ahead, sign the contract, get under construction. Um, we had the sale of the building this still happened. And so come back to us. That was the direction I was given when we know a bit more. The mix. But you're right. That was one of the pieces that I had suggested that we could tap into if you wished. And there was a general consensus that that would be, be most So but what would be the technical accounting would be to take it It'll be transferred from revenue to some type of restricted or yeah we could fund we, we so currently have a fund capital for, project we have a public project. safety reserve yep. that we had yep. okay so it's, it's, a right. time. it's a good catch so we've got to come back to you and finalize those things but there were a hint there were a bunch of other items in there too wasn't there so yeah. I can't remember I there was what the L were, I mean, we yeah. came up with a couple million bucks um, the salt shed money that came in that's, 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 that's what, what we're talking about that's, 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 that's the one there was more uh, there was proceeds of sale of town owned property or uh, tax acquired oh, property was 50 oh, or 60,000. Yeah. So, there was a laundry list of things. So at some point, just update for We've got to come back and formally have the council yep. adopt that and direct okay. it. Yep. Thank you for yeah. mentioning that. I should also mention, Luke, just to have my memory, and, and I beg your pardon, I have no materials, but I, I thought I'd just mention it in passing. <clears throat> the school impact fee, we've had a banner year because of all the development occurring. And the way we've used the school impact fees historically is Ruth has actually budgeted the actual receipts from two years ago. So it's hard numbers. We know what those are. Uh, and it goes toward uh, offsetting school debt uh, because that's mm. the limitation. It's, it's for capital investment, not for operating by uh, function of statute um, limitation. Um, historically, that number is between two and 300,000 bucks a year. This year, it's like 700000 because of this spike um, with particularly the multifamily. So that'll be next year's budget that it gets reflected in the debt service for the school? Right, and then... In a the reduction in debt service for the school. Well, it's, it would be a revenue... Yeah, so less reliance on property tax. We just have yeah. another source of revenue to offset a debt service. service. But it's yeah. an anomaly, so next year we have the 700000 an extra 300000 towards towards revenues, and then the following year will drop back right. down. So one thought uh, that actually Julie and Kate came to me with is they have some capital needs, particularly at eight corners, with some of the growth they're experiencing. They need to do some parking lot improvements and install a couple of modular classrooms just to keep pace with demand. That is going to take shape as a normal CIP project in the budget. One of their concerns is timing, because they've got kids coming in in September uh, without a chair to sit in. So to speak, and being a little dramatic with that. Um, so one of their inquiries was, is there a way for uh, for that, for money to be accessed through the impact fee, you know, blessed by the town council, so they could get a project started sooner than you know, July or August, which if it's left to budget, uh, that's before they, before they know they have the authorization. And, and then the only reason I suggest that or bring that up is that uh, I guess the capital need you will have in front of you that's going to be hard to reject. I think they make a very compelling case. And if there's another way to, f to pay for capital items other than bonding, that's something that this committee's talked about in the past. And it also has the uh, benefit of giving them a head start that they might have a fighting chance of having them up and running for September. So I, this is my reaction to that. I, I think it's terrific to be responsive and to try to address those things as they arise but I it does make me a little uncomfortable when I hear things like that and it, it's not taking place in the context of us understanding more broadly capacity you know and demands on capacity especially for you know we're just talking about classrooms right or yes yeah and so, forgive me and, and, and you're right all, all of that needs to occur yeah. but I I was just floating the kind of concept of tapping into these uh, one-time monies, if you yeah. will. I think we're going to fall back to that normalcy. You know, the, the effect of bringing that 700 in is it's going to make this budget easier in that respect. But next year, we're going to have to 
um, fall back to reality and back to the two or three hundred thousand dollars. We will have forgotten all about it by then. <laughs> we will, and so uh, there's an opportunity to be creative, perhaps. <clears throat> Just to clear you, I thought I heard you say it could only be. Can it be used for capital and debt service, or only just debt service? The school development impact fee is based on town ordinance, mm -hmm. and uh, it and can be used for certain specific projects that are essentially school related. And uh, but, it can but they can be used towards those construction projects. It yeah. just doesn't say it has to be bond money. Yeah. Or, you know, it just, right. so it just can cannot be used as for a, operations. A, as an operational convenience, we used it, we've used it historically to offset debt yeah. because there's always been debt that's yeah. qualified yeah. 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 capital debt, and there probably always will be, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a matter of kind of a, a cadence that we fall into that makes sense year over year. And I had kind of forgotten about the portable classroom piece because I one of my suggestions was going to be so that we don't have this big spike this year and then or next year and then a big drop the following year is maybe take only a portion of that increase and split it between the two years. But uh, I forgot about the portables. Hmm. So she's not formalized the request. And, yeah. And, yeah. But I uh, it just jogged my memory that um, it kind of touches on a number of themes that this committee's kicked around in the past in terms of how else can we fund capital projects. Yeah. Right. And smooth out the peaks and valleys in our budget process, too. Okay. No, I appreciate you calling that out. That's helpful. Yep. Just one quick question, though. You said that those impact fees are recognized as revenue? As revenue? In the in the special revenue okay. fund, right. They're not, they're not part of the general fund. Okay. Everything in the general fund just flows back to Great. fund balance. But these special revenues, they get set aside. Okay. But, restricted. but technically, Don, I think that we do consider them as revenues in the budget. Yeah. We've got a, a debt yeah. expense. Yeah. And oh. so technically they are considered right. as a revenue offset. Right. It doesn't offset entirely. So, so when the revenue comes in, it goes into the special revenue fund, then we, yeah. as part of the budget process, right. say we're going to pull some of that out to be used right. towards right. the debt service. So This is very helpful, and, uh, and I'm, I'm asking a lot of questions. It's really helpful in terms of my understanding how the, how the accounting works and how the, you know, the fund nope, flow works. No, that's fine. Thank you. Well, all monies have to flow through some type of revenue account, correct? Correct. It. And then how you allocate it out to either an expenditure or it becomes a permanent asset. Correct. correct. Yeah. Thank you. And then that's broken down to either restricted, unrestricted, general fund, or whatever. There's all kinds of new titles. So, yeah. And we can't spend a dime right. without council approval. The majority of that approval comes by way of the budget approval, but there's mm -hmm. other times you authorize expenses. And that's why when you, at the, during the budget approval process, there's this two or three page document right. that says here's your operating here are the revenues here are the capital here's the schools and then uh, you know what we're going to do for interest rates for taxes and stuff like that thank you okay so let's see that was page five page six went over the other funds and then seven was the breakdown of the school and then the last page just shows some revenue well, I break out the revenue <coughs> department, but then I also break out uh, some selected revenues that are usually some big revenues for the town. And uh, just so we can kind of take a look at them. The one thing I did do was I pulled last year's December 7, 2017, and just by so you could see building permits at the end of December 2017 were almost... 292,000, whereas this year they're at about 209,000. So we can see that there's already a drop mm. just from this point of view by almost 80,000 ish. Mm. Although some of the state revenues are up, so that's, that's good. Mm. Through the chair, can I just, can I just ask a question or request? Um, I think on, I think it's at one point in this executive summary, and sort of you know, maybe in your last paragraph something, but what is most interesting to me is really some type of projection about, you know, we're on target for our budget, we're ahead of budget. I mean, you say here that our expenditures are consistent with last year. But what I really, I, what I'd like to know is just, where are we you going? know, <laughs> green light, yellow light, red light, mm -hmm. and, and where are we? And if it's a green light, how big is the green one? Yeah. Um, so it, it just it just another sort of couple of sentences saying, looks like we're on target, looks like we're not. Um, it, it would help my speed reading of saying how much attention do we really have to pay to. That makes me 
sense. <clears throat> but nice narrative and nice detail, uh, you know, outstanding command of uh, <clears throat> the numbers. So thank you. Very good. <clears throat> Uh, with that, um, if there's no other questions, we'll move on to the next item uh, regarding pension funding. So just a high-level overview, and I'll then open it up and just kind of just for the public more so. So either one or two years ago, I think that there was an interest on behalf of the Finance Committee to have a beginning di beginner's discussion around pension funding. There was a conversation that um, GASB, which is, um, I hate to use acronyms, but general accounting for... Go governmental accounting for state and municipals kind of thing, whatever. I don't know, the, I don't know what the acronym is. Government for. Accounting Standards Board, I think. Right. Is the so, and it's for municipalities. <laughs> there was a conversation, um, I, I, I don't really remember where it was, but something around that maybe the future of pension funding on our financial statement might need to be reviewed from a policy perspective um, and how do we address that because it's really an unfunded liability that's listed on our, on our balance sheet. Um, and so we recently had our audit with the um, with our auditor. Um, there was a uh, follow up conversation in which he has suggested that there might be a, either a change or a misunderstanding. I don't know really the, the circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of want to understand or have a conversation here because this was one of the items I think that we had Good. on our list of things. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So um, that's just kind of a high level overview for the public. Um, Peter, you're a little bit more fluent in this particular area. Didn't know if you had any issues, or not issues, but, you know, comment for around that, and what should we do? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think the, the flow of conversation was, yeah, the, the, the standards change, so we then, we do have to disclose what that liability is on our financial, at least in the footnotes, if not mm -hmm. on the financial statements. We thought we heard in prior years that there was some thought that there would be a requirement to start mm. funding that, and so that's what this item was if we have to fund it two or three years from now is it, are we better off taking bites away at it as we go but we asked that question and our auditors in that meeting suggested he didn't see that in the foreseeable future that we were going to have to fund it so i think that kind of changed the conversation i think it's still a good conversation for this group someday it's going to the piper is going to come due um, and i think the conversation was just if we ever find ourselves when we have flush in funds um, do we want to start parking it? But I, I think there is no necessarily immediate urgency to do it. Yeah. I think that changed no, to do with what they got. Right. Right. No and, I, and just to, some context, I think if I remember correctly, this started out um, in the changes several years back is that it first started out as a footnote. Yeah. And now it is, abs it is actually <clears throat> stated um, as a statement by itself uh, within the document. So it's, it's, you know, given higher priority than you know, just kind of that footnote piece. It's, it's considered required supplementary information Supplemental, that's just yeah. after the footnote. So, yeah. and it's, it used to be like, you know, we used to have a paragraph or two. Right. Mm -hmm. Now it's like almost a, its own book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, it's all coming from, you know, it's, it's nothing that we can pull together ourselves. It's all coming from the state because the state's auditors have to give us that information. Mm -hmm. And then our auditors mm -hmm. kind of take a look at it and see if it makes sense for us. But it's a significant number, right? The, the liabilities. Oh, yeah. It, for us, it was, I think, three million three, or something. Uh, three, and, four million um, bucks. Yeah. So, so the fear is if they all of a sudden do it, then we've got to find that in our budget someplace. Which and and I have to say that out. back in the day, uh, you know, a long time ago, our council asked us to put together a listing of fixed assets, which took like a whole year. We're talking pulling numbers out of the air back then, but, you know, our numbers are much more solid now. <laughs> But then GASB 34, which is Governmental Accounting Standards Board Statement 34, came out and said, oh, now you have to do it. Right. And then they did the same thing with the teacher approvals. They said, well, you know, you kind of should right. track that. Right. And then all of a sudden, uh, years later, they said, okay, now you have to do it. You and now you have to fund it. there's a financial crisis, and they tighten yeah. up their belts again. And so so to Peter's board. point, yeah, we don't have to really fund it now, but it's slowly creeping its way. It's now it's on our uh, entity-wide financial statements, where before it was just a footnote. So green, green, code oh. yellow. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> surprised. Our auditor was uh, a, a bit more not an alarmist, but he he seemed more certain in years past about all right. They're requiring us yeah. to report. The yeah. next step is to fund. Yeah, he backed off. He really backed off, and and I heard the backup alarm as he was talking the other night. I, I, I honestly don't know the change and what caused yeah. him to be different. I thought there was an ice cream truck in the room. 
But I think that, um, so there, there was a secondary issue that I heard um, around just his whole message that actually I think can facilitate us being prepared that should this happen. So one of the things that I took out of that is really the issue around fund balance reserve. Because of the conversation was that while, um, and he didn't address us specifically, but did mention that there's um, the movement is truly um, uh, communities having more than simply 8.33% mm -hmm. and having two months worth which is somewhere is you know anywhere is between 15 and 16 percent. So you know, you know, thinking from a long-term perspective is that if we start addressing that directive, um, and we've already done a little bit, we haven't really, you know, we need to kind of actually get the balances in there to get towards a, a higher number. When it comes time and the pension funding does does happen, if it does happen, you know, you know, I think we'd be in a position where you can reallocate out of the regular reserve, dedicate whatever portion into the pension funding kind of liability piece and then start building it. So in essence, you're kind of doing a... And, and there's other benefits, of course, by uh, yeah. building fund balance mm -hmm. in terms of bond rating and those sorts of yeah. things. So I think you're right. It's it's simple, but arguably the most effective way. I think if we approach it from the fund balance yeah. for now yeah. um, and, and, That's and have a true commitment to that, because we've come a long way on the fund balance. Um, you know, it's one way of tackling it because it's, it's kind of a long term, because there's no way we're going to go from... 8.3 percent, or actually, we're closer to 10. We're at, we're at 8.3 oh, yeah, no, as of yeah. June, right? Um, you know, there's there's no way we're going to get to uh, 15, 16 percent in one year. So, right. but we need to take a serious look at that. So, does this slide back? I mean, this is uh, an obligation that goes back and forth between the towns and the state, or how does that work? It's a, no, there's it's no legal local requirement. Local. Uh, the, the, we get an annual reminder from our bond rating agencies. One of them, Moody's in particular, uh, is highly interested in fund balance. I think it's a, yeah. a really yeah. important indicator. And so, but there's no requirement, there's no okay. law or, or otherwise, but there's kind of best practice. Um, th the challenge is it's really hard to build it. Uh, mm -hmm. Luckily, we you have to build in the tax rate. You do, and you've got to be a little circumspect about how you do that. The way it's typically done is you have an elevated overlay, uh, and and then you might have some positive uh, budget performance that helps contribute. But uh, the the towns that have these fifteen and twenty percent, uh, the only way I can think that they've done that is been overly aggressive in their overlay amount, and that simply when it it's not needed to fund tax abatements, it falls to fund balance and. You know, once you make that switch and you keep it at that elevated level, your tax rate um, kind of stays mm -hmm. stable. You know, we have tight budgets, and so we're not turning over huge annual surpluses, so we're going to be at a snail's pace to grow it by that way. Uh, and secondly, we're very concerned about uh, not overstating our tax rate, that yeah. we set it to cover our operational expenses. And so something's got to give if we yeah. want to make advancement there. Well, we didn't we we've already asked you in this budget to at least put a number in for the equipment reserve, right? Mm -hmm. Which I mean, we'll see where that takes us. Yeah. But what is the overlay been? One percent historically? Oh, not, not even. Uh, yeah, not even. I mean, statutorily, like it could be as high as five percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We could have a, you know in the order of a million dollar overlay, which is just absurd. You know what we need to uh, to pay. Typical abatement requests in the course of a normal year is something between one and two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, Revalue years are kind of anomalies, and so we should kind of pad it just to protect ourselves. You, you would expect with a revaluation there'll be the potential for mistakes and higher abatements than you would in a normal circumstance. And last year was higher because of the tax appeal issue that was happening. And I can tell you, when the assessor, the, uh, I, literally the final decision the assessor makes before setting the tax rate is deciding what that overlay amount is, because mm -hmm. that's the float, mm -hmm. if you will. And we're concerned about tax rate, and so a penny matters. And, and uh, we often err on the side of, let's make sure we're covered to meet our abatement needs. But let's not overstate that. And I forgot on the, on the budget review documents that we see, and I think we asked for a change last year. We didn't see the overlay, right? It's, it, it didn't show up, and then we asked for it to show up. Well, you see, it, it, it's included on these tax rate comp sheets. So yeah, it's, okay. it's one of the numbers at the bottom there. Like the last number. It's yeah. built it's into, into that here. other. But yeah, it's not something well. Yeah, but that, it builds itself. <laughs> it's a number on a page that is seen, so it's in, but it's not something you approve. I, I guess That's where I'm going with it. I can, I can break it out of here. No, no, it was more of do we want to have 
to get to Sean's suggestion, do we want to start putting something into the overlay, a modest amount, mm -hmm. that goes into fund balance, but it's really meaning to yeah, target. So do we have any authority to do that? My first, because is we're going to be well. careful about it. Uh, but I think the overlay is an area that I think council does have some involvement with. The assessor, um, first and foremost, needs to make sure that there's adequate overlay to cover expected abatements. Yep. That's their mm -hmm. piece mm -hmm. of it. Beyond that, I think, is more of a, a policy and political decision. Uh, we've typically not brought that. I mean, that's a decision that's made literally right before commitment, so it's mid-August. Um, but if that's a practice we want to get into of checking in before that happens. So the question I have is, um, <coughs> one, is there an expectation that we uh, begin that analysis now and have it effectively part of this year's budget? Because we need to know. Um, and then two is... Um, uh, maybe an evaluation of the existing policy to determine one, make, making sure that the practice isn't in conflict with the policy that we have. Um, and if there any amendments or anything needs to change, I would think that we, I would think um, we might not need to actually need to do anything related to that unless it's very specific on how we want to allocate that, if it's anything other than general fund. Yeah, it, I think there will be an opportunity with here we are already talking about the revaluation, but that is going to have an impact on the final tax rate. And mm -hmm. um, regardless of this discussion, I, uh, I'll be suggesting to the assessor that we probably have a healthier than average overlay uh, because we're changing 8,000 yeah. values and things are going to mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. And so I think that will be a bit overstated. You might recall, though, in this current budget, it's the highest it's been in mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. well, and we yeah. did that for a specific reason. Yeah, 300, yeah. Yeah. Um, it won't be that number, but it's going to be higher than average just because of the revalue year. Because we can expect a higher number of abatements just because things happen. Mm -hmm. so, 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 do we want to give any direction to Tom on how to handle this in the budget and the analysis? Do, do we need to bring it to the council if we were to do something before we give, or do we? No. Okay. Uh, personally, I don't think we need to do because it's part of the budget presentation and they'll have to approve it as part of their regular approval. I mean, it's no different than any other kind of consideration we have. Is, is that something? So, and it would be, sorry. Is that something maybe like us, uh, not a policy, but maybe a directive that well, whatever the saying. overlay is, is like, you know, a half a percent additional will get added on to be used towards something or I don't know, I'm making that I think it just needs, to, as long as it's transparent on what we're doing and that it's part of, it's part of our kind of review. So, you know, yeah. I, I, the easiest suggestion is simply um, is to suggest that the overlay be set at the same level as it was last year um, and see what that is. And then the alternative is whatever in the normal course of business, what would that normally be so that we can see what the impact yeah, is going to be. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then maybe why you're using it. Is it to fund the pension? Is it to build up fund balance? Is it for the equipment reserve? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I think we've got to be a, a little careful about that, um, just because of. Because you can't build in. You cannot build in. I mean, we couldn't have a line item to say uh, fund balance contribution to fund balance, uh, but effectively you're doing the same thing by bearing it somewhere else. Um, so I think just to be fair and honest and transparent to our taxpayers, the consequence of that is a slight. Like, we're talking a penny or two. We're not yeah. talking dramatic increases yeah. that can make in a budget of our size. An evaluation of our size, a, a penny makes a big difference. Uh, so, what would be your recommendation for guidance? What would help you? I think it makes sense. I mean, my personal view, it makes some sense to start moving in that direction. So, I don't know. I can provide a list of what the percentage is, you know, overlay compared to budget, maybe, or something to show Just what the overlay has been view. over the past yeah. five years or so. Well, the, the dilemma is that it's at the expense of the tax rate. And you know, as we talked about with the joint finance, um, we want to be not overstate what that estimated tax rate mm -hmm. is. We want to be as close to mm -hmm. our sure, uh, so. numbers as we can. And so if we overstate so, that, it, it, it shows itself in the tax rate, and likely you're not going to hit your budget goal, or your potentially. I mean, those are the sorts of trade-offs. Yeah. So is this a, a marker now, at least for process discussion? You know, we're not really far enough along to know what numbers, right? So. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see almost like the, what you presented at the workshop, a table format, 
um, what has been the dollar amount of all of the uh, overlays for the past 10 years? The percentage. Mm -hmm. Is a percentage um, of the value? Well, both the dollar value and then also the percentage. Yep. Yep. Um, sure. and, and as long as we also keep in mind, um, as part of that, just from an analysis perspective, last year was an anomaly because of the revaluation. This year will also be an anomaly when you're looking at the dollar amount, just in the normal course of business, whatever the recommendation will be, because of the two valuations, uh, revaluations that happened. Can we also add to that ch table a, a column that um, gives the dollar that fell to fund balance that year? So we'll see. Perfect. I think that would make sense to see. Absolutely. Okay. Good point. Yeah. So, you, so you're saying, you're suggesting that by default, some has gone to fund balance sort of yes. consistently when yes. all is said and done. Yeah, and you, yeah, the yeah, it's been portion. you've yeah. seen a consistent increase in your fund balance over yeah. the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it hasn't been leaps and bounds, but there yeah. has been consistent growth. Yeah. It has more to do, I suspect, with the <coughs> overall budget performance, actually right. underspent or more importantly, uh, more likely more revenues than expected excise has yeah. been yeah. the yeah. juggernaut right. for us. So but it's We can put good. a column in there as well. So overlay as a dollar figure in the budget, overlay as a percentage of the total budget, overlay spent. Yeah. So yeah. we can see it's what was actually spent. Overlay budget, and overlay then, actual. And then yes. actual, Perfect. but then total amount that has been fall, that has fallen yeah, yeah. to fund yes. balance, because then we'll be able to right. see what percentage Perfect. of Yeah, because the difference between budget and actual would be yeah. what falls to fund yeah. balance. Yeah, no, that's great. So okay. that gives us a perspective. So, so four the, columns. Got it. So from a narrative, the other piece I'd like to understand is um, what, um, where is that, uh, that um, sand line? So uh, my understanding around Gasby and accounting and municipal accounting is that you cannot budget um, fund savings. Um, or fund reserves, like we talked about. So you can't have a line item that says fund balance, and you can't budget and put in, at least that's what I thought I understood. I could be wrong. Can you just look into that and see, you know, can we, because I would rather be more transparent about mm -hmm. what we're doing yeah. rather than simply putting it into that overlay and suggesting that, well, there's an increased expense and we already know that maybe our goal is different than that. Because I'd like to understand, because, I mean, mm -hmm. Falmouth has, as long as I've been on the council, Falmouth has always been anywhere from 12 to 15 percent, and even a little higher at times. I know they just went down because they, um, they actually just, you know, they stayed flat because they just went in for a major bond. But um, how did they handle it? You know, how did, how did those other communities? I know South Portland was the other community that was on there, having a pretty large. How did they achieve that in their budget? It, you know, did they simply do the overlay approach, or did they do it differently? I think Falmouth actually is one one of the places where they, they do it through the equipment reserve, that they they build it in and they pay for it. When they go to get equipment, they try to have the reserve there. So I think that's why that number they don't bond, they actually they try to they try to buy. Um, but I don't know. But that, that balance true. wouldn't be part of the undesignated fund balance. Wouldn't it? It wouldn't that, that would be if they did it through the equipment reserve. It would uh, it would be in the Report in the restricted portion yeah. of the fund balance. Yeah, so the unassigned piece would not be, which is what they're looking at. The, the credit agencies about. are looking at the unassigned. Right. Right. Unless they take it, they do it through the, that reserve, but then when they get it in, they say, okay, we're going to put it back in the fund balance. You know, they could reallocate it afterward. I don't, I'd like to just understand what do the. Yeah, I can check with yeah, them. Yeah, just. I know and, and for for the public's information, fund balance usually is, you know, it's the difference mostly between assets and liabilities, but the reason they want a, a fairly decent size fund balance is in case of their, uh, some kind of natural mm -hmm. disaster. Uh, we we if we take our total budget and divide it by 12, that's how much theoretically we're spending on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we have to get to the council for specific, you know, emergency appropriations yeah. and things of that nature, that takes time. And then in the meantime, you know, public works, fire, all those guys are doing their jobs. And, and, and so this provides those resources because people aren't going to be coming in to pay their property taxes or excise if there's some other catastrophe going on. So. We'll also verify, but I'm quite sure there's a state law limitation, a statutory limitation. Overlay cannot be any more than 5%. Mm -hmm. Which is a big, big number. Big we've number never approached it. Never get there. Uh, but beyond that, I think there's a, a great degree of latitude. It's a whole big formula. For context, could you include what that calculation so that we know what the statutory thing is? Just a swing along the graph chart. Sure. Yeah. We're going to have a table. table. So if I can ask, um, and I, I don't know, I think I may have given you my minutes. Um, on that list of um, items, yeah, yeah. Um, I believe, so this pension funding was on there. So I'd like to suggest that in the new that um, um, we remove that. Is it still on there? Yeah. So number three. number three pension funding is on this. I, I would recommend that we remove that as a future item and replace it with reserve funding. 
reserve or fund balance? Fund balance, sorry. Okay. Fund balance. I made the decision, and maybe I shouldn't have, to remove that ongoing list. I think Colette had That's been fine. carrying it. <laughs> would you rather it be carried as kind of on your agenda so it just kind of is I present? Wouldn't. Pardon? I wouldn't mind seeing it there. Yeah, just right. Right. It's it's a reminder. Yeah. That we don't have to carry this right away. And actually, for wording. <clears throat> actually, while we're on that, one thing I think we talked about that I didn't see on the list was we talked about just we we agreed on that benchmark the dashboard we wanted, but we wanted to see the metrics as of year end or twelve thirty one we were waiting for I think or something. I, I apologize, so, she wasn't at the last when we discussed that. Yeah, so, yeah. No, well that's okay. I'm just saying it, that, but that's but, it's ready to go, so I can have it for you for March. Yeah. So whenever that fits so, within the. So if we can have that as a discussion item as the benchmark. Well, benchmarking to ourselves, just so everyone understands yes. how we're using the word benchmark there. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. The, it's, it's the dashboard, the dashboard we developed yes. that just had the updated the, numbers. Yeah, yes. the green, the yellow, yep. the yep. type concept, which great really works. So. But magenta. magenta, magenta. So moving on to, yeah, moving into item six is uh, future meeting dates. Um, we've already mentioned it earlier, but just to reiterate, um, Wednesday, March twenty seventh at five thirty um, is our uh, next town council's finance committee meeting here in Chambers. Um, and then on Monday, April 8th, um, it's just to, for context, uh, yeah. April 3rd will be the manager's and the superintendent's presentation of our budget at the regular town council meeting. Um, and then April 8th um, is our first meeting with our department, which is the school department's presentation that will begin at 5 o'clock uh, here in council chambers as well. Um, and we will go from there. Anything else regarding meetings or that we need to kind of follow up on? Um, and again, um, as um, Assistant Manager Crockett mentioned, the budget portal will be up soon um, with at least, well, it's up now, but um, the information for the new budget cycle will be um, uploaded um, in due time. So keep looking. Uh, that was a very useful tool last year, I thought. So I think that's great. And anything from the rest of us? Anything from Council before I open the public comment? Just if I could, the two yeah. items I have for next meeting would be to report back on some of these parameters around fund balance, whether you can budget it okay. as a line item, what the statutory limitations are and the like, and then we will have the updated dashboard with the, uh, the new financials. Do you just, so I, I have the, so do you just want the dashboard or do you also want, so if you'll remember a couple of years ago, I came to you with this whole fleet of <laughs> metrics assessing everything from debt service to and so forth and I had sh um, every year when the audits finished I update those mm -hmm. so do you we don't have to discuss them but do you want to see them or do you just want to know that they're there I'd like to see them please okay thank you yeah. I think we can have the conversation at the executive summary level which is the dashboard by itself okay. but the supporting information having the tables is okay. always useful sure. one click down you know uh, from the high level stuff Great. So what I will do um, for the next town council meeting is if I can get a fresh copy, because I've written all over mine, but um, if I can get a copy of the financial statements and the executive summary, because I'd like to provide that to the rest of the council for review, if you don't mind. Tom, if you sure. can help me with that, that would be okay. great. Um, and with that, uh, open it up to public comment. We have one guest here. You're all set, sir? Excellent. Thank you for staying with us. Um, and with that, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion Second. Adjourn. And we're all in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much. Thank you.